Welcome, everyone, to the wrestling show. May the 4th be with you, by the way, Billy. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that all day today? May the 4th be with you? I know. I was aware of it. I'm not. I've not spoken to anyone. Uh, (laughs) I hear it all fucking day long. Uh, I'm from the great show called the Lingus Mafia podcast. Uh, All my nonsense is at Lingus Mafia, and I'm joined by your number one source in all of your inside wrestling news, that is Mr. Billy Body. Yo. Do you have anything uh, interesting that you could share with us that just popped into my head that maybe you got uh, inside news? You got anything good this week that uh, you could pop on here for just, or a little uh, teaser to make people go to your site? Uh, yeah, hold on. Okay. That's so good. I, I never I never look for news. I never hear news, nothing. The only time I ever hear it is when you, like, text me or something about it otherwise I, I don't have a clue of what goes on and anything i never look for yeah i mean there's stuff there's stuff coming up there's like a story about orton at the moment um he's working oh, let me get your phone. yeah orton's working um orton's working now through what was supposed to be time off Oh, because like Bray Wyatt's Bray Wyatt's having like some kind of mental breakdown. What is with him a... all the time with this mental shit? Yeah, he has like he has yeah he has mental health issues or like you know these are things that people just got on with and got like you think I mean, he's Lars when Sullivan? Him, when you see that Randy Savage and mm-hmm. documentary or the Piper documentary and stuff, I think these people just got on with things and now like people like feel sad and they they decide to just not go to work. So I mean, I'd be sad too if they did this to my a character that I created, so I can see <laughs> see where it's come from. But it's perfect like, it's that that's it. his character because it's like a crazy person and he's really actually crazy. Yeah, I, I think like it started with the uh, Lou Harper thing, and he's not right, so mm. he came in and done the mania thing because he had to be there. He agreed to that, and that was it. Like everyone was like, "Oh, how can you lose?" It's like, well, he's not gonna be at work, so. He might as well, but it was weird. Um, that's why I don't think he needed to lose, but Orton, because Orton's staying around and he's doing his time off, but he's getting to do what he wants to do, which was not work with Braun Strowman, which is why we get his triple threat, because Braun had just beaten Shane and he needed to do something. Mm-hmm. And Randy Orton didn't want to work with him. He said it was pointless because um, he was supposed to get Braun ready for Lashley one-on-one next. Uh, so it kind of told you he would win this triple threat. Um, what else? Uh, Charlotte asked for something that no one's ever asked for before, um, <laughs> which was a little release from her contract, but like a a free a contract freezing, which they they automatically freeze contracts of contracts of performers anyway once they're injured. Mm-hmm. But she asked for a freezing of the contract so that she could go and work in other places for a year. But still, actually, be employed by WWE. Really, like work, like as a wrestler, or go fight. Yeah, work as a wrestler in wow. Mexico, Japan. I mean, they must be offering a shit ton of money for that, because otherwise, why would you fucking bother? No, because she just wants to break, and she just wanted to do that. She wanted to go and uh, do like just do shows with her boyfriend. Jesus Christ, who's her boyfriend? Just- Charlotte's boyfriend. Oh, I thought you said Shayna. Okay. No, no. That's even weirder. What the fuck is Charlotte wanting to fucking leave the... Oh, my God. Yeah, and she's she wanted, whooped she, then. She wanted her, contact, her contract frozen. She didn't want to leave, whereas uh, contract. he wanted the right to, um, to go and do shows, not like take an entire year off, but mm-hmm. he wanted to be able to accept indie bookings and Japanese bookings whilst on the WWE contract and they obviously said no and they obviously said this no to Charlotte as well um, what else do I have hold on that's um, fucking weird that Brian I mean there's not even really indie shows going on well there is Japanese shows and I think he's hmm. thinking about the, the future of that and everything um, what else is going on um, Becky Becky Lynch refuses to return to the Thunderdome because she had a segment cancelled wow. at WrestleMania. She had a segment cancelled at WrestleMania, and they were like, oh, um, we'll, we'll save it. We'll try and get something off on TV for her. And she was like, cool, but I'm not coming back to the Thunderdome. Yeah, um, fucking waste. Jesus. 
and um, the TV ratings, the TV ratings are going to matter even less now because um, WWE are, are, are continuing to sell these companies on the facts that, well, not the fact, that's the wrong thing to say, are continuing to convince these companies that their content is digested in multiple ways using like YouTube numbers and Instagram and, and all kinds of like social media and obviously um, Hulu and all this other stuff that they're on. So what they, what, what they, what, what they're also saying that they also are, are making the pledge. And this might be true that unlike any, all other TV shows where people just find a show and they like a show or whatever, they say that their audience, their core audience of um, one and a half million people will always move and buy everything that they do. Mm -hmm. So th this is something that, whereas the rating is what it is, the WWE have convinced, can convince these companies that if you do business with them, you'll immediately inherit like a million obsessives who, who will come along with them. So what this, what this means is, is that the, the reason why the TV rating doesn't matter at all and TV rights deals do is because um, the reason they went to Peacock, uh, which was the rival of Fox, which is NBC, and didn't even give Fox the opportunity to bid for Raw when the Raw contract comes up, um, is be is because they they know that Fox are not going to renew them for that for that number, and they have already began talks and for a playoff uh, between Amazon Prime wow. and uh, Apple TV. Which is where they think that SmackDown will go, oh, unless it go unless it goes to NBC, where there's going to be a full where NBC will own everything. Then it'll be Peacock, uh, NXT, Raw, SmackDown, and that would be the most likely place. But the fact is, is that they they can start a bidding war between Apple and um, and Amazon, which would mean that SmackDown would then start to have its lowest. Right. I mean, it wouldn't even be measurable what it would be getting. It wouldn't be unless... on TV, like real TV. It's Amazon or whatever only. Yes, wow. the, the, you think of those things. You think of those things as what they are now. Mm -hmm. But they are, they are, they are both interested in consuming, um, or sorry, purchasing live sport. And Amazon has already started here in England by buying some Premier League games and things. So Apple and Amazon, when this contract comes back up, which is in 2023. Uh, they're, they're going to be in the live sports business. Mm -hmm. like, so the way you think of them now is going to be completely different. And WWE is going to be one of the big parts of that. And so they need a big established show, which is where WWE comes. Like everything for them is falling into place right now. Mm -hmm. Like this, this company are, like, are going to blow up their value to the most ridiculous number. Uh, like Vince is going to go to the grave with his company at like the most valuable it's ever been with yeah. the least people watch, with the least people watching it on regular say, TV. The worst product and and the most value. Yeah, well, and then that's why like there's no real incentive. Uh, the thing is, right? I don't get. I still I still don't understand this part of it. Okay, you can make loads of money. Well done, right? Mm -hmm. Why does the TV need to be so bad? Like, why why do you not try? I mean, I guess it's one of the excuse could be like, oh, we we just don't want to take any risks like we don't want to do anything on there that might lose anything like because at the moment it's the case of don't rock the boat until someone turns around and says oh you know like actually the tv number is is everything that we're interested in and it's like okay you've got billions and billions of followers but did they actually read what most people say at the end of a raw mm -hmm. but then again at the same time I i'm not going to put too much weight into what people say about things because you know, we had this whole Eva Marie situation come up this week, mm -hmm. and the comments are just like they basically outline every reason why I don't want to be associated with these people. Because if you're turning around and going, "Oh, how can you hire him? you fired Mickey James and and the Iconics?" It's like, oh, is that what they're like, saying? Because oh, like, they're going, they're going, <laughs> yeah, it's like. Like they didn't have the I, money, so that's why they had to fire. But now, why are you hiring if you? Didn't it's like, try? it's like, you know, what kind of, yeah, well, what kind of company loses like this talent to bring in her? It's like, are you fucking blind? Like, what is he doing? Um, there are like levels. So, okay, yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't kick any of them out of bed. Yeah. But the fact is, is that I've slept with women who are like on that level, or, or even I've slept with women that are better looking than 
fucking Sasha Banks and Alexa Bliss and all these mm -hmm. stretches that we have to like go to and say, oh, they're amazing and try and make ourselves think they're amazing. No, she is fucking amazing. Like she's a fucking full on ten walking down the street, like more like more superior to everybody else that they have. Thank That's God for that nose there. job too, because we see that nose before that nose job. <laughs> Oh, I don't, I don't care. oh, I gotta send you the the before. <laughs> but, but but the fact is, is that like th th this is other than other than like Paige Van Zandt, who would be like a crossover, who would be like able to do both things. Mm -hmm. Where I don't think that she would it would take her any time to pick up the wrestling at all. And the fact is, is that the measuring stick if you take out Sasha and and Charlotte and to and, and even Bailey, nobody else can work. Like I watched this match between Dana and. Fucking mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte on on Monday night, and then um, and then also um, all, all the, the, these matches in SmackDown, all these tag matches that are involved with like Tamina and Natalia, and Natalia is supposed to be like the one who can go. And <laughs> yeah. It's like no, they're all fucking shit. They're all shit. This is just this is on TV for the sake of the fact that everybody needs to be on TV. These women would not have jobs at all unless we we're in like a whole um time frame of um social justice and equality and all this bullshit if it was a case of who is the most talented and what do you actually enjoy watching these women would be out of a job completely and then we would go back to utilizing people how they were the thing is with, with eva marie she needs to have a fucking she needs to be like a bitch and she needs to get mic time and she needs to have stories and she needs to be like you know, big teasing and whatever. It, what yeah. you know, she needs to be utilized properly. Like a, she needs to come in and basically be a fucking a, a heel diva, like the old diva, which will really like wind these like people up because they're already complaining that she even got a fucking job. Yeah. So they're if they're stupid enough, like to that they can't be that stupid where they ignore this like automatic heat that she's got. But yeah, like, she's but got is, real but, fucking heat. That's for sure. But the part I don't understand is. What kind of guy is complaining about this? Like, what uh, what is wrong with these fucking virgin losers <laughs> that watch this? It's like, oh, why have you hired her? What is wrong with you? Like, I don't understand. Like, what? Like, what is wrong with these people? Like, have they just given up on sex? Like, have they just decided, like, oh, this is what we do in our life. Like, I don't know how people go out and get that that stuff, but you know, I, I like, I was lucky just to meet this one fat bitch that I married to in college. <laughs> do they like, realize like, that she was hired like a couple months ago? Yeah, she was hired a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah a while ago. <laughs> it yeah. wasn't after everyone got fired. They just never brought it. Cause like we kept thinking, hell, it was all the way back to before the rumble. Cause we thought maybe she would be a surprise in the rumble, but we're like, ah, there's people, no people. And so, you know, let's get it maybe at mania, this and that. Jesus Christ. I mean, I think it's the whole, I think it's like kind of the point, like even, even if that's the case, which it is actually, but I think it's the whole principle where they think, well, it's not a principle because it's their company. They can do what they want, but they think there's a principle that there's a, there's a principle issue in terms of hiring her when you're firing people who in their mind are really great. Like fucking Mickey and the mm. Iconics and, and all, listen, I couldn't give a shit about one of those people that were fired. Like I would take her over all of them. Like uh, Joe, Joe, you know, like, you can turn one. around and go. You can turn around and go. Yeah, Samoa Joe's this and Samoa Joe's that. Samoa Joe hasn't been anything for for a while. He's been sitting there on commentary. Do you know yeah. why? Because he's fucking always gets hurt. I, I yeah, I've got like I've got pieces of glass that are stronger. Like so. <laughs> so I mean, the, the, the guy's not in his the, not in his prime. And the fact is, if they, if you can't, you're paying him, and he can't stay he healthy enough to put a run together. Like, how can you use him? How can you put him like in a major fucking story? Like at the moment would have been the best time because, I mean, if he'd been healthy at least during his Thunderdome time, then you know he would only be working once a week. Yeah. But he's no, he's no good to them. He's not an asset to them in the ring. He took himself off this commentary job because he didn't want to do the commentary job. So what the fuck are they supposed to do about that? For once, I actually think that they're fucking blameless in this situation. Even when you go as far back as when, when you go and dig, dig as deep as looking at the trash bag situation, it's like they, they they send your stuff back in a trash bag, but they didn't send <laughs> they didn't put the postage label on the, the trash yeah, bag. Yeah, it was in a box. <laughs> it was in a box. In a it's like 
Should they have folded it nicely and placed it inside the box? Everything folded? That's what I'm thinking. Like, I, I would expect to get my stuff in a box. Vacuum but seal? If it's, like, if it's got the, like, be- if it's, like, extra safe and it has, like, you know, the wonderful, like, surroundings of a, of a nice trash bag, like, I don't see what you're complaining about. It's, it's they've, they've done double what they're supposed to do for you. Like, I guess they want them to fold their uh, underwear, too, because that's what's in there. So if it was in a fucking box folded, I guarantee they'd be like, they went through my underpants. That would be the complaint then. So I, I don't know how... They want it received. I, I don't have a fucking clue how you would... You put in, uh, like, Macy's boxes, I guess? I mean, what the hell do they want? Just because it's officially want, these... a trash bag. You know, like, here's your garbage. I, With a duct I, tape I, I, on I, I, it. <laughs> but the thing is, all, all, all you see is, like, constant, constant complaining. And, and, and I couldn't understand what kind of person complains about is how do you not want to look at this this person for a bit how do you not want to break up the show between fucking the luchadors and fucking benjamin and cedric having their tag match like do you not want to do you not want this fucking break in the show to whatever she's going to be doing because i i I guarantee you unless they're fucking stupid like they're not good well they are but uh, but surely it's not going to be she's out there having fucking match after match after match every week like Lana is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can see them doing that, but that, that would be a mistake if that's what they're going to do. But the thing is, even if they do do that, first of all, like, it can't be no worse than, than, than watching Lana as well. And second of all, if Lana's being, if she does, like, half the sessions that Lana claims she does at wrestling school, where she keeps posting up these yeah. Instagram videos going, I'm in training, I'm in training, I'm in training, I'd be, like, embarrassed to say I was in training. I'd be like... <laughs> Well, I used to yell at Eva's posts because she was always at Disneyland, and I would always write on her thing, "Go practice," because <laughs> she just never bothered. It was like you don't you go on vacation, you don't fucking practice, you lazy fuck. And I got blocked eventually. Like I can't go on her Instagram. She blocked me. She blocked me when I said, "Oh, uh, you got got new tits during your time off," and that's when I got blocked. Um, because, you know, she's showing them on Instagram and I go, oh, cause I commented on them, but she could show them. Okay. I understand. I'm, I'm a horrible person then, I guess. So even Marie got new tits during this time off. No, no. It was like from before where she had time off when she worked there. Um, and it was like a new pair of titties and cause they were big and I was like, get new implants during time off. And it was, I got blocked. <laughs> I didn't realize she had like, she, she'd got them. Oh, is this when they did the towel thing or not? Oh, before that. Oh, God. I mean, it was a long fucking time ago. It was a real, it was, she was off for an extended period of time and then came back. So, and you know, she was at Disneyland during that time off because she doesn't fucking practice. Let's, uh, let's get into this fucking show and fire through, um, this. I, I think our rambling and just overall, we might almost need a new structure and like, just take a note on certain things that stand out to us and have a conversation because our first 18 minutes of this show is better than going one by one of what the fuck happened. That's for sure. Well, uh, no, it, it's not. It is, but also when we do Raw and SmackDown, I listen to I listen to some shows that do it in that do it in a in a way where they go, oh, so so and so wins, so so and so did a did a flip, and then he came out the corner. <laughs> Uh, he came out of the corner. Stop listening reverse, to smart wrestling fans. The suplex. There was a two count on the. They don't do it like that. There was a two count on the small. There was a two count off a small package. He came up, got super kicked for the win at three minutes and twenty four seconds. Right. And it's like, That's yeah, honestly, scary. I listen to show, I listen to some shows. How do you like listen to fucking like wrestling the, show? I don't listen to any fucking wrestling shows. I don't know how the fuck you do it. And you know you're blocked by a smart wrestling fan. You should check see if you're still blocked on Twitter. I bet you are. Yeah. Well, uh, that Twitter account's gone, but I'll see if the uh, SGP Soccer one is uh, is blocked. I but bet you because still... you follow me. All they did was whoever followed me got blocked. My girlfriend that's, that's... got blocked. She goes, "Who the fuck are they? I, what the fuck am I blocked?" For? That's a shame. So I'm like, I'm like you making pay them Patreon the... money. I'm, I'm donating to them. The thing is, at the moment, it's unbearable. I only pay for like Larry, and like Larry's fucking off sick. <laughs> But the thing is, is that they're all they, they've turned him into a into a social justice warrior. Like he is oh, now God. like the the, the, prob, the problem. Like he now 
has started to like agree with everything that like weasel like joe says and then like some weeks at the moment like he got covid and then he like came back for a bit and then i think he had like a relapse which i know what that's like and um and like now he's off again and he has these like nerdy listeners that come on and do the show with him like guys that have listened for a while and been on patreon for ages and then he has like his girlfriend on there who's just like so she's one of these like she's like fat and obnoxious like she's one of these people that like is just on it's just on the show and she's like really uh she's just really it's hard to explain what she is as obnoxious like she doesn't like laugh at his, his jokes or she like basically just um she's got one of these she's sarcastic about everything but not in a way where it's like funny like it kind of derails the show in terms of like she doesn't know how to banter properly it just comes across as like obnoxious um but i actually noticed this like you know i've actually noticed this over over time like there is a lot of um these like fat girls that are supposed to have these like jolly personalities they're not like that (laughs) at all they're actually like they're actually like anyone fans jolly (laughs) <laughs> they're actually like fucking bitches like i got i fucking like um went back i remember i was talking i'm talking to like this girl i used to uh, like see there's nothing going on now but like i um i was on and off of her like fucking 11 years ago and then like um eight years no no, no three years ago i ran into her in a in a, in a in a pub and then we ended up going to like a club together and then we got like drunk and started kissing and stuff and then like i was she was going back to mine and her friend like stopped her and i was just te- and i was texting her like about it i was like your fat friend caught and she goes <laughs> i goes oh my God. and then she was in her photo and she was on a whatsapp phone and i actually messaged her and goes oh do you still hang around with fatty cock block <laughs> <laughs> and, oh and then she God. did the whole thing she was like oh she didn't cock block you she goes i wasn't gonna fuck you shit yeah you go yeah like, sure yeah. Yeah, of course. But like Gosh. that's anyway. That's not even. That's not even like the main part of the story. The part. The part is, is that like yeah, it was like fatty cockblock because it's like, oh, I'm not. No, usually no they're the best at oral. To me. <laughs> the fat ones are best at oral because they got nothing I mean, else like, going on for them. I wouldn't know, but I just don't, I don't find them to. I don't find them to be. I, I think it's a myth that they're jolly. I don't, I don't, I've never found them to be like they're usually boring. angry. Yeah, exactly. I or hungry. Found them to be like. <laughs> Hangry. Yeah, you're always, you know, I mean, you're always fucking angry when you're that fucking hungry. I mean, Jesus. yeah, it's hangry. That's an actual, <laughs> that's an actual thing. I've, I've, I've heard like stupid girls fucking say, that. oh, I'm so hangry. Yeah, Snickers fucking adopted that. All right, I got 45 minutes, so let's get through this fucking show. We haven't even started fucking SmackDown yet. All right, uh, Billy did the notes for SmackDown, so do you want to read the notes for SmackDown? I'll read them for Raw. Yeah, let me get my other phone because I, I need to use this one phone that I'm on. Okay, I'll start it off then uh, with what you wrote. Show opens with Bianca. Who oh, has- let me tell you something real quickly about the notes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just, this, we're still on, we're still on the show, but the notes. So I'm like, so I was fucking using the Austin takes terrible notes for his Austin report, and he's always asking you what's going on, what's going on. I was like, why don't you make notes? I was mm-hmm. like, look, I'm gonna like for the next two weeks, you're gonna just take our notes. Like, and then you're going to use our notes to write your report because we take, like, proper notes. And it's like, and then, and then first of all, what you did is, like, you deleted, like, last week's oh. Raw while we were still using it. <laughs> oh, shit. And I was like, okay, like, I goes, well, now you're going to have to use your notes and then use my notes for SmackDown. And um, and he goes, I goes, all right, you might as well. And today I was like, you might as well do Raw while you're sitting around. It gives you less to do on Friday because we mm-hmm. get really busy at the weekend. And he said to me, he goes, Cavs notes are shit. <laughs> <laughs> you so, tell them they, they've dropped off quite a bit since I'm like, fuck this fucking. Now I'm like, before use, it was goes, every second, you know? He goes, I can't do it with these. He goes, they're rubbish. So <laughs> so basically, yeah, I, I, you need to like think about like your notes. I don't need to do your son's homework. My notes are for fucking me, okay? Well, I don't even want to do these this fucking is, this notes. Is only, this was only supposed to be a two-week thing. So yeah, I, okay. I would have I'll be proper on the next uh, two then. I was I was actually going to go in and tidy up your notes, but then my fucking raw recording like cut off like an hour and 45 minutes in. So <laughs> cuz I so, was yeah, like I've just finished it. I was bullet pointing a couple things that were like cuz I you could see you could when you read my notes, which I'll read later, you could hear my aggravation because it is a bullet point of a here and there thing. It is not each segment because I'm like I don't want to be here. I just, I am like, I hate this. 
And I'm like, well, I need to remember something, so I'll write a sentence, you know? And I'm like, okay, that's so, because I got to read the note. Um, oh, that's, that's actually what I was saying. Do you know, like he's, he's actually said that to me. He goes, these notes are terrible. He goes, does he, does he like, does he, he said to me, these notes are terrible. Does he even like wrestling anymore? I was like, <laughs> I said. You can read, you can tell. I said, he used to. Oh. He used to like it. Oh, God. I am just as aggravated by it, where it's like, Everything is practically a sarcastic fucking sentence where I'm like, I, I say, oh, uh, Hurt Business, uh, Shelton and, and Cedric break up. Now they could be uh, jobbers uh, sing singles. It's like, it, that's nothing to say. I'm like, who cares? I don't fucking care. And I'm aggravated that I don't care. But I'm like, I enjoy watching SmackDown. And I saw that you made notes for SmackDown. So I said, okay, I don't have to make a fucking note. When I see it's already done, I go, well, now I'm just going to watch yeah, SmackDown. Yeah, no, that's, that's why I did it like pretty um, pretty thoroughly. Because yeah, you did. Because I'm like, you guy writes down everybody who had fucking predictions. For God's sake, I go, I go, look at him making fucking notes. I go, when the hell did this ever happen? So no, I've been doing, I've been doing. Oh, oh, for the predictions list. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a bit, That's why that I was, was like, bit. look at him making notes. So, uh, why don't you start it then? Go ahead. No, because I, I, I was back to the future happened. What the fuck happened? We went oh, back that's in time. My, uh... <laughs> These are all the, um, these are all the, um, hold on, I just got a message. I was going to say, that's a ringtone, isn't it? Because I have that too. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, great news. Our new network, Blue Wire, is doing a spotlight series on soccer and would like for you to participate. Our marketing team is rolling out. Say, huh? What the hell is this? He's reading me a message like, it's a pre-write. Let's put my name into it. It's like an interview. There you go. See, you get these things, and I, I, I fucking. Meanwhile, I hate I doing what, this fucking show. I don't Fuck. know what this is. I'll have to go through it properly in a minute. Um, all right. So, so yeah. Going, moving back uh, to this. Yeah. Um, With so Bianca, yeah. it opens. Oh, those earrings! I didn't even notice. <laughs> oh my god! Well, I've been so busy with making this golf simulator in my garage. I had it on. And so I wasn't like fully fucking staring, you know, I'm like, it's on and I'm past. And then I see like, I'm like, oh, good. Cause I was going to like have to rewatch it the next day. Cause I actually watched it live. I, I haven't watched fucking SmackDown as it's been on in ages, but I have like a projector set up with a big fucking movie screen. And I put it on there and I was, I took a couple pictures. I'm going to send it to you and go, look at this fucking Roman Reigns in fucking, uh, you know, <laughs> in fucking movie theaters. So you don't think that, uh, getting back to Bianca, you don't think she's ever going to get over with the fans, but I thought uh, at WrestleMania she was pretty fucking over with the fans. Well, that that was WrestleMania, and obviously that was all. They got into this whole, you know, this whole moment where they, they convinced people they were doing this whole historical moment. And I think at that point, I think people were just going to go along with what, what fits into the script. I mean, they booed Roman, and I don't think, like, Anybody really, yeah, you know, wants wants to wants to do. It. I think on that yeah, best part of the time, show, everybody kind of just went along with with what they were supposed to do because it was a one off show and, we've, and there, nobody's been out for so long. So, and I think obviously that's your main event. You know that that's going to be like a big moment, and, and like it's not like they were booing Sasha or anything like that. But I think as this continues to get shoved down your throat with all the gimmicks, I mean, these fucking earrings, the title, they were title belts. Which is then they were horrendous and 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 these and these promos and the association with the, with the street profits and just constantly going out there and putting EST on the end of things. This is going to get old real fucking quick. Like remember when Cena did the rapper gimmick and then was suddenly doing the whatever it was fucking you can't see me. Yeah, the nice guy. The yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. I mean. That, that that transitioned kind of kind of smoothly, but had he started with the fucking multicolored t-shirts and and doing that oh. gimmick and and everything, it would not have worked. Like he had to like evolve into into the PG character that that it became. I think WWE went PG in nine in two thousand and eight, if I'm right. Um, so yeah, two thousand and eight they went PG, and I think like Cena was one of the people behind it, and I think like their negotiations with like Mattel. Mm -hmm. um, kind of sealed the deal, but the fact is, is that um, if she continues to, do, if she, she continues to do this, there's, there's nothing likable about her at all. Like there's just, 
uh, for, for me, there's nothing likable about her at all. I mean, some people may may be on board of it, but they, this definitely falls into the bracket of um, annoying. The, these X-Bark yeah, and, and these yeah, and these people that watch and they you know with their kids and they and they want that this this to me is a father daughter thing where yeah. she kind of falls into the box of being this into this role model category and having this role modelish story. If you're not on board with that. I don't understand why you'd be interested in this because these these and it, and it's, it sounds racist when you say at the moment the new day and the street profits and Bianca are all fucking getting on my nerves and, and they're the five that when they come on I can't stand it. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is that I have no issue with watching or even almost on TV with AJ or or Lashley as a champion or. But 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 the thing is is that or even even what Apollo's doing, but these five and you can even throw Big E in that. Like I talk about Big E later, when we, and, but I'll talk about it now when we get to it. The fucking preacher promos from the preacher New Day preacher gimmick with the whole voice and the ah oh, and the, ooh and all this shit that he does, like it's fucking awful. Like that needed to go with the with the with the separation, but to do. Big E of the New Day, not with the New Day. It's fucking awful, and like he's he, he's killed himself. Like, I think they just like say- that personality, so they want him to be like that's him in the back, I guess. You know, Mister Jokey. I mean, yeah, he's interesting he's- on the podcast. I enjoy listening to that at times. Yeah, but th- but this is not gonna this is not gonna work. So getting back on point, uh, they end up with a six person match out of um, fucking Ziggler and Rude coming out and Street Profits coming out and Bailey coming out. Like, Bailey couldn't even get, like, a non-title win, but, like, the Street Profits got their win um, because that's how they can think about giving people more shots because they need to pin champions. 50 shots, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they do They do run videos of Roman and Brian predictions throughout the entire show. It ends up being 50-50. I wrote these down just to see... You were, I was you were, surprised because I'm like, I go, Seth actually said Brian? He didn't predict Roman? I'm surprised. I, I actually wrote, obviously they make this 50-50 on purpose. I wrote that sentence. You will, you'll never know this for a fact. But I honestly wrote that sentence before they actually did the um, did the predictions. I mean, I wouldn't doubt. That's, you know, that's how they work. Yeah. Um, they follow the same format of champions just being beat so people can get title shots. So Tamina and Natty beat Nia and Shayna. Getting back to my point earlier, these women can't work. Um, they don't belong on television. They're not good to look at. They're not skillful. Like This is the total definition of, um, it, of shoving equality down your throat. But the fact is, like equality doesn't just mean you get... You, equality doesn't just mean you get equal TV time because you're both sexist. Like that, that's that's not what equality is. Equality should mean like, oh, uh, we deserve equality because we are also equal in the talent aspects. Mm-hmm. And you can't like if, if that that the whole point of it is supposed to be, oh, we can do everything they do. We're just as talented. We shouldn't get overlooked as we because we're women. Well, actually, you're stealing time from people that are more talented, but because you're fucking shit. Like three of these women are, are dog ugly, right? Mm-hmm. And then and and Natty's not look great, but but you know she's at least involved in wrestling the giant for, for a long time. But but yeah, I mean they look like they've been done again recently. Oh, yeah, but she's in no, she's in no she's in no position to 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 train people or anything. And like if her Tyson kids get getting all these credit, go oh he put these matches together and he's the guy who, he, he's like the heart of the the women's division and, and whatever. It's like well. He needs to fucking sort it out because <laughs> I, 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 he's probably doing his best as well. I, these women just are not coordinated. They can't run. She's just, they can't uh, make I mean, fuck. She's very, you could see her almost counting the steps. Who, Natty? Yeah. But it's she's been always the worst. Yeah, but but you, you've seen, you've seen, you see these people like, and like Lana's practicing things and she's in there. She put a video out where she's fucking, doing like an arm drag and she lands into a bit. It's like, it looks like a fucking choreographed yeah. dance. It looks like something like fucking from the blue man group or fucking, um, <laughs> Cirque du Soleil or some shit. It looks fake. It all looks fake when they run. It's embarrassing. It's like, look, it's, uh, I think it, fine. I'm all, I'm all for women wrestling, but it has to be like Sasha. If you're not as good as Sasha 
and you can't like work like that, then you don't belong on a show. Because it makes it more special, like when Sasha is on a show. Like when you get this fucking shit hot women's match that's on there, like you can have like the fucking um the, the female managers and like some you know the, the general managers like and that's the thing it's so weird that they pick sonia to do that role because that was a role that should have been taken up by an attractive woman that couldn't work like that's where you should have put like peyton or lana or somebody as the yeah. general manager not fucking not fucking pinocchio like <laughs> i don't understand like how how they worked that one out you know this is great i'm sitting here watching wrestling last night with uh, the girlfriend and She's not watching. She she watched something on an iPad, but she glances up, and Sonya's on the fucking on the screen. She just goes, she needs a nose job. <laughs> yeah, she does. It's I'm obvious. like, yeah. I'm I go, like, yeah. It's it's known. <laughs> She's got that. I go. Every lesbian has that fucking nose because it looks like they smelled something bad. But why doesn't she? Why doesn't she just get it done? I don't understand. Like, yeah, maybe she so don't obvious. give a shit. You know. Yeah, but you're in a fucking you're in a TV industry. Oh, I changed. I fucking. Changed. I was fine until I was. I went on TV. I changed my nose as soon as I came up. You're like just, fuck just this. Fucking, just, just. fucking bump anyway getting back to this uh rain dominic are in the back <laughs> and ray says winning the tag titles of his son in a dead division in front of zero fans will be the biggest accomplishment of Jesus his career Christ. Uh, he's like this guy's won the fucking rumble uh from number two and then won the title at the next wrestlemania so he wants to he wants to win this uh as the black promo uh i just keep saying i like this but they'll ruin it uh we talked about big e uh, yeah. Biggie Apollo Part 37, DQ finish, Biggie at it one, Aziz interferes, Owen makes a save, Sammy attacks Owen, heels come out on top, but then fucking Sammy's picking up the belt and teasing like he wants it, mm -hmm. so uh, he gets Samoan spiked. I don't know what they're calling that now. Just it, the uh, Nigerian spike. Yeah, the Nigerian spike. Oh, no, <laughs> original. I'm going to use it and uh, call it the American spike. Fuck you. <laughs> so yeah, that's what they do. I said I thought I thought this was acceptable given like the the stuff after the match. Um, so the main event comes up, and it's over forty five minutes left where they air the video package of this. Um, Heyman's in the back, and I've put in my notes, and I don't know if you want to dispute this. He cuts a really terrible promo. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. Has, has, it was long for nothing, and like it went nowhere, and it was boring, and it was just like. Yes, 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 and a no, no, no. It was like fucking really cliche and boring. Like I would not expect Heyman to to come up with something so unoriginal. But um, anyway, this is the big talking boy of the whole show. Roman comes out with the new music, and uh, they let it play for like three or four minutes. Uh, what did you think? I think. Well, you know, I said I think I said obviously it's generic because they don't make music like they used to. But I don't think it's that bad. I think people will get used to it. Um, it's not the worst music because when the shit when they gave the Shield, mm -hmm. everyone's like, "Oh, what the hell?" The Shield sounds like um, WWE 2K creator wrestler music. That's what they all said about the oh, Shield, really? and then and obviously that that grew on people. But the other part of it is uh, is this this one's nowhere near as bad. And I think that if you do something about that 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 piano bit needs a bit more like bass. I've listened to it a few times. I think it's fine. I've, I listened to it like crazy today because it's on iTunes. I really fucking like it, but I do. It's funny that you say the piano thing because there is a part where I'm like, ah, it could be out of there because when it hits fucking hard, I, it, it sounds fucking great. But I get the piano thing is supposed to be, you know, Godfather, that type of fucking sound they're going for. So there's it's not hard enough. It's like it's too like. And it's like it's not like it's not hard enough. Yeah, I, I, it needs to be more aggressive. Yeah, because when it does hit the fucking you know punch part, it, it's really fucking good. But like the beginning, I almost think takes a little bit too long with the fucking gospel almost in the beginning with people you know the old school Triple H fucking uh, people singing in the beginning. Uh, but I really I like it. I like it. It's only like three minutes long. The whole fucking song though on the uh, iTunes, and it abruptly stops. But yeah, I didn't know it was. I I, I didn't see it on iTunes. I saw it on YouTube. 
Yeah, because oh, Umar so sent it in after talking shit and then said, hmm, maybe I'm wrong. So, yeah. Well, I said, that's like what Michael Jackson used to do. He said he it take him three times before he really knew um, if something was really great or not. So, um, kind of got to let... I mean, there's those generic things that come on where you go, you know it's trash immediately. You go, okay, that's a fucking... You know, I'm watching the old, you know, Raws and Shamrock's original shit. You know, it's just fucking... Let me pull this one out of there and uh, see. The only generic music that I think was ever any good was uh, the Hardy Boys. <laughs> that one's in commercials and everything, so that's just the fucking universal. Um, um, finish up. Finish Ro- up. Ro- Roman wins. Roman wins this match. Obviously, mm-hmm. uh, he taps him out, and then he Smash. concertos him afterwards. Um, With Cesaro tied concertos. up, watching. Yeah, yeah. Cesaro comes out for the save. Then Uso turns up. He actually won this match without Uso. They saved Uso to come out for when Cesaro was coming out to make the save. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, this match is fine. These two aren't going to have a bad match. Uh, I don't know where Brian goes from from here. Um, but yeah, that was that SmackDown. And Roman is so got- fucking good, dude. I mean, I, I I think God, I wish he was on fucking Raw. It would keep me fucking tuned in. It's just so fucking good when he's out there and when he's uh, you know with speaking parts and and doing his character. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, who knew this was there though? Yeah, the whole fucking I'm like, time. I think people were fucking begging for it. I mean, it was, it was obviously people were begging for the bad guy, but this is you know finally something a good part of the bad guy thing. But they, they but they could have done this like with the with the crowds years ago. Yeah, but then I think they'd have nothing now. Like they they if they did that, then you'd really have nothing to watch right now. Probably be like, he'd be a good guy again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by now. Um, Raw you, from so you roars. Yes. Raw, yes. Now, do you Your notice touch. from the new intro? Here's my bullet point note. It says WWE together. I never fucking noticed that until this week. What the hell does that even mean? It's not forever anymore. Uh, it's together. It's probably like black. We're, we're in this together. Uh, yeah, and- I guess. Uh, you know what? You're fucking probably right when it comes to that. Um,. AJ and almost finally back, and they get their rematch against New Day. But we know where this is going. Was did one of them have fucking uh, the plague? Was that what happened? No, nah. they no, just no, took no, time no. off. No, no, the story behind this was is that AJ's match at WrestleMania was supposed to be like him losing to to Goldberg. Like there was, and Goldberg after the Drew thing was just like, I don't want to do any matches. I, I don't want to. I don't. I, I didn't come back to do matches without any fans. There, he goes. I can't get. He goes. I can't get up for it. So he was out, and then they tried to convince Triple H to get ready for for Mania, and Triple H was like, "No, nah, it's not. It's not enough time for me. Mm. Like this whole process. The whole process takes me like four months to like sure. get in that mindset. I like to start getting ready in December or whatever. So he goes. I can't do it anymore at this age. So yeah, they ended up just coming up with this tag match. But the initial plan was is that whoever he was going to work with, um, he was going to get that to stink off that loss by by going off TV again mm. for a bit. You know, uh, he was going to yeah. He was going to. They were going to. They were going to. You know, give him time to uh, to sort of make people forget whatever whatever happened. Obviously, they would have built either one of those matches up like crazy. And uh, and then after he lost, he would have like gone away a bit. It's funny because uh, there was no consideration, I don't think, to, to actually putting him over in any of those matches at all, which is why the time off is there. Mm-hmm. Because uh, obviously, if he won, he could just come back on Monday and go, "Hey, I beat fucking Triple H or I beat Goldberg." But it was like, yeah. no, we you make the old guys, you give the old guys the fucking best match that they can get because we are the only one we trust out there to mm-hmm. get anything out of Goldberg or Triple H. Um, Triple H, not so much, but but definitely Goldberg. Uh, but yeah, that didn't happen. So he gets stuck in this other situation, but his like holidays are booked. Not that you can go anywhere, I don't think. Well, he probably can. He's in a hillbilly state. Um, so so hey, Georgia so, wide yeah, open. I mean, yeah. So um, so yeah, that that's what happened. Uh, where does almost rank as uh, one of the greatest champions we've ever seen? <laughs> Oh, I, I, did you put that line in as well? No, I you put my, that line in. <laughs> yeah, I put that line in. I thought you might have I was put like, it in too. Ad, I look at that and I go, Adnan. And all I'm thinking is General Adnan. And I forget that that's our announcer's fucking name is Adnan. Yeah. Um, I'm like, what the fuck does this mean? I'm looking at it. And I'm like, 
oh, this guy must have said this. I'm like, oh, boy. He's really, it's rough. It, it's a rough, rough fucking time. And I feel bad for him because I feel like he's almost, like, been thrown through the fire. Like, you know, uh, I mean, he asked for the job, I'm sure, too. He applied, but Jesus. But the the enthusiasm it sounds so fucking fake is as, as if I had to do this now and am not excited and it would have to be jumping up and down when something happens and you just know it's bullshit not like when Jim Ross when it was good that was like a real reaction you know screaming and something was going on because it was fucking hot to the touch now you're like who gives a fuck um Eva Marie, we already talked about that. Uh, Sonya put Charlotte in a woman's triple threat for the pay-per-view. Uh, I would like to know what the fuck this story is all about, like, with Sonya and Charlotte. That, you know, th- is it going to be that she wants to eat Charlotte? I don't know. Uh, Charlotte lost the number one contenders match to Asuka just a little while ago. Um, and you think it's probably a late decision to just get the belt off of Marilyn Manson and Manson's and uh, Ellen's secret child. Yeah, that's what she looks like. She, she's like she's Marilyn for up. sure. Yeah, you, you, you can t- you, you can tell what's happening. This situation is going to be like, oh, you're one of those lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I you see it a fucking mile away too with that. Oh god. Um, but like, yeah, she's really like hand She's got fucking a bit of black in there, and it's like the the, the, the the weirdest thing is is that she's actually got pictures out there. She can be. Attractive. Yeah, like, when she amazing. looked like Charlotte like, a little bit, when she had the long hair, she was feminine. Yeah, it's like you can you can actually go from this and make it. You you see all these like kind of like dikey looking girls sure. about, and you think, oh, look, gross. Like, but with her, it's like actually, if she didn't have the black lipstick and all that shit, I'm sure she could even pull oh, it off with, with the, the short oh, hair. She'd be fine. It's always disgusting. It disgusts me all of it, like with the black <laughs> lipstick and the, the the black eyes and the. The fucking ears, like where you know you yeah. stabbing them. You know you fucking you can fuck her those. in the earlobes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's fucking. It's all fucking disgusting. Like to go from like what she, you know, I'm not, not she wasn't. I mean, she was pretty decent. Like when you see the pictures of her with the with the longer hair and everything, I, just I a little bit longer, why. even not just the buzz, just a little longer was uh, now hot. Is this actually? Was this actually this evolution? Was this part of what fucking? got her push like did they was this was this imperative in terms of so my question is if she looked like she used to with the longer hair and, and everything you know with the big she's still got like big tits now but mm-hmm. like you, she, it's just all hidden but had she like just been a little bit more gothy and still stayed attractive would she have actually got pushed if she still did her ring work and her promos and and everything else <sighs> Does she have to do this to us? I think she does. I think she does. Because remember someone said you're trying you look like Charlotte number two or something. There was a big comparison to Charlotte when she was NXT and she was blonde. She looked fucking just like her because she was tall. And so she said that on an interview, like she redid, but I'm like, that's kind of a lifestyle. You don't just go, I'm gonna be goth looking. I mean, you gotta be into it. So to go from glamour girl with long blonde hair to fucking... And I think that's why it doesn't work. Because when she's coming out there, and obviously I know she doesn't write the lines, but the fact is is that if you even have that kind of personality, you don't get given the line of nobody likes you. That was fucking awful. That was embarrassing. Like, that was aimed at fucking... Bad girl stuff, you know, the mean girls. No, but no, nobody likes you. Yeah. It's like, what? Like, no, is that, that, that wouldn't... That that wouldn't even fly at a fucking um, you know for for a ten year old who, who found that stupid like that was beneath that. Um, Mantar shows up again. He's back. He's in the states. I guess he got away from the fucking plague that was in India, with everyone fucking dropping dead over there. So he's uh finally on Raw. And we only saw this guy in the fucking Crown Jewels before. So now he's he's over here. I was like, oh, it's gonna be Billy's favorite fucking guy. Um. Uh, Garza in the back. Now, here's something interesting. Garza's in the back, and Gulak gives him shit about his rose and says, for a fucking ladies' woman, a ladies' man, you don't fucking ever get any. And he says, all right, well, fucking, he goes, I would like to have your fucking flower, too. He says, okay, well, let's have a fucking match. And after I'm done, I'm shocked they said this, too. And he said, I'm going to shove it up your ass. (laughs) So, shit. Um, So then he has a match with him. And he shoves it up his fucking ass. <laughs> I do enjoy this. He fucking grabbed his pants, 
shoved it in the back of his pants, and then kicked him in the fucking ass, a running kick to shove the fucking rose up his ass. I said, bravo. Bravo. This was fucking good. What do you like about it? Do you like this or no? Yeah, this is fine. I mean, uh, you, obviously your immediate thing is, why these on TV? This is filler. And Until that happens. You know, and then you go, okay, it was worth it now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Shelton and, and Benjamin, we talked about now they could be singles jobbers. Um, Cedric can't speak. He always losing his voice as you have throat yeah, cancer. <laughs> like, what's wrong with him? Like, why can't he speak at all? Like, how is he always losing his voice? And he also thinks she uh, Shelton's been there 18 straight years. Yeah, did he not say that? That that was in my notes. Did he not turn around and say that? Um, how many years have you been here? How many opportunities have you had? It's mm -hmm. like, well, he left. He left for <laughs> ages. He left for fucking ages. He left for about ten years. Yeah. Um, rated RK bro wins against uh, Elias and Gunner. And my God, did you see fucking Riddle land on fucking Elias's head with that flip? Fucking kill somebody. You, his brain explode. And Elias was holding his head pretty fucking good after that. I would like to know if uh, he really got fucked up from it because he sold it pretty well if he didn't. But he landed on his head with a fucking flip with his ass. Um, Drew obviously is listening to our show because he's having an interview and he calls T-Bar T-Bag. And... Um, Oh, yeah, everybody's calling him that. But, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, we start this. And why but, I mean, take the like, masks fucking... off and keep the stupid names? He brings that up, too. I said, oh, look at this. Um, so what do you say? You said, was this promoted exclusive interview? At the top of the show, they said, Drew, later on tonight, they said Drew McIntyre is going to do an exclusive interview. Did you not remember? Did you not see that? God, I uh, probably, but I mean, this is well they exclusively. They, he spoke they, to uh, Kayla. I guess. They showed this entire thing, right? They did his whole video package. It was like a two-minute video package, and it was about Drew. It was, it was winning the Rumble and everything, and it was like, and, and after they showed, like, you know, the highlights of mostly from twenty twenty. Most they showed loads of highlights of his run, and they went mm -hmm. later on tonight. The, you, the, you will hear from an exclusive interview from Drew McIntyre. And it was like, this was it. Normally, to me, that means they've got something taped. Like, he sat with fucking Corey, Michael Cole, whatever. They got something yeah, sit really down. important. Yeah. And, you know, it's odd that I only knew Drew was having a book because when he was doing commentary uh, in the main event, he mentioned, yeah, my book comes out tomorrow. And I'm like, what? Was, and, and by chance, I see it at the bookstore today. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, okay. I signed one. Yeah, I, I, I'm like, don't don't brag too loud that you'll have a signed copy of that book. I can't imagine that that's anything, that book. I, I don't know why you would even want that, just to have. No, I but they're, so, they're, selling, they're, they're selling like loads and loads and loads of signed ones. No, oh, this is just straight Barnes & Noble on the bookshelf. You know, that's just there. Um, Alexa Bliss uh, has her thing. I don't remember if she said she was having a wrestling match this week. I don't remember. She, if she last said week, that. she last week she said that. Yeah. God. She went, next week she goes. She goes. It's all fun in the fun house, but next week we need to. Miss we're gonna like, we're gonna venture to the ring. Yeah. yeah I mean, with that I'm so fucking. I'm so bored of this. Like this. It's too this much. Whole, it's it, it's like Stop when wrestling. Bray's not there. You can you can understand why Bray Wyatt's pissed off because when he was when he had his idea for the character and then they were interpreting their idea for the character mm -hmm. he's no longer there to protect his character i mean this is not his his character he's not there but this is what they thought that bray was doing yeah. like this is what they were like oh your puppet talks to you and like you're freaking crazy and possessed and it's like no that's not what it was at all it yeah. was like it was a copy of the um the doll the the doll that the, when bray wyatt came out originally there was a a doll um, through like software, uh, people were hacking into children's games, and there was that doll that was telling them to do to kill with themselves. With that smiley to... face looking thing, with the yeah, big I nose, what yeah. It was. I Moma, what it was Mo Mona. Moma, Moma. That's what that's what Bray was based on in terms of it was a character. It, he was kind of like, without saying it in the PG era, mm -hmm. he was supposed to. He was like a child, um, child manipulator, yeah. child like sort of. On borderline playing like a, a a pedophile or a cult leader, the cult leader was more like the the original character. But it was a very unique character with levels to it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like oh, like I'm fucking 
uh, Chucky, like fucking, yeah. oh, look at Chucky. Like, oh, Chucky's, Chucky's uh, possessed me now. I'm fucking, mm-hmm. no, it wasn't that at all. Then this is terrible. Like, I can't, it, when, when Alexa Bliss comes on, and she's not wrestling, so she is doing something different, which is what I was saying the women should do. They don't all have to be in the ring. Mm-hmm. But this is terrible. I can't fucking look or listen to Alexa Bliss anymore. That's how bad this is. Uh, main event, we get uh, Lashley versus Braun. And um, at, in the beginning of the show, they flipped a coin, Braun and uh, uh, Drew, to see who got Lashley first, because next week's going to be the other guy gets him. And, of course, uh, you know, Drew's ringside and all that kind of shit, so everybody gets distracted. And, <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Drew gets involved. I was like, fuck, Braun was pushing him in the face pretty fucking hard. I almost started thinking, fuck, maybe he's, he's really fucking pushing him around. Uh, he manhandled him pretty good. He comes out halfway through the match to go to ringside. Though. Yeah, and you know what? I laugh because he goes, you know... Uh, you know, back when I was younger, I wasn't comfortable on the microphone, but now I'm very comfortable and, you know, I, I'm fine. I'm like, well, just because you're comfortable doesn't mean you're any good at it. <laughs> well, but, then who, but didn't the fucking guy ask him about promo class or some shit like that? Why that? Uh, yeah, like that. that was odd to me because I'm like, you kind of not supposed to be bringing that kind of shit up, I thought. You know, and he, and he did avoid it. He said like a one word fucking answer. And someone said, oh, very good, or something like that. And I was like, oh, he fucking got out of that one real fucking that, quick. That guy, that, that fucking dude is lost out there. Like He is. He, he's really lost. He's his, just his, there. Oh, when when a kid, a kid picks up on the fact you keep going, oh, no. Oh, have you seen the oh Austin's my God. Instagram? No. Austin's Instagram where he's laughing at him saying, oh, oh no, all the time. <laughs> well, what, what happened to Todd Phillips? Didn't he, he was fucking good. I liked him. And I'm like, what happened to these fucking guys? That was he was there before, and I'm like, that was like their next guy in line. I don't know. I don't know Todd Phillips. I know Tom Phillips, who was on Raw. Who the hell is Todd? Who's Todd? Something isn't there a Todd other than Pettengill? Maybe it's Tom. Yeah, just Tom. But whoever he is, and see that's what's good. I don't know him. I but he he calls a great match. He's not bad. Everything's just, fine. Let's just get. I don't know why they just don't get Pettengill. Like, because. <laughs> I mean, well, Pettengill wasn't a play-by-play. He was an interview. I know, but he could be now. Like, you love that guy, be. and I was always I couldn't stand him. Ugh, it was not for me, not for me. Well, that's the end of your fucking raw report, and uh, we just got it just in time because I got to be out of here in about five minutes. So, um, yeah, I I think uh, we we were well off the base and bring that back. Yeah, without, we really doing, did yeah. without without slowing it down. Like, we, I don't know how we did that. We spun through it um, from nose jobs to fucking. People doing jobs. We had it all in line. <laughs> oh, fuck. I, I, like I said, SmackDown's the superior show. It's the A show by far. Um, what about when even Marie comes back? De- depends what they do. Depends what they do. You got to do. I mean, if they use her completely wrong, like you were mentioning before, it's one thing to have somebody. It's like, okay, I get is Aaron Rodgers, right? actually... Do they actually? Th- are they actually thinking about making her a babyface? Because if you actually disregard it. social media and look at that video, like she is talking about fucking being a role model and all this kind of shit. Well, I think it might be one of those where you think so, and then she comes out and she's a cunt. She she posted. You've got to go look on her fucking Twitter. She posted a fucking video, or she retweeted, and it's a fat broad who's filming herself holding up the championship belt, walking around with the belt. Like a kid would do. You like I won the title, and she's strutting around with uh, Eva Marie's music, and she's holding it. And she's doing the Alexa Bliss behind her back, and she's some fat chick, and <laughs> it's so it's so bad. And she posted. She goes, "This is everything," and I'm like, "Oh my god!" And I go to look at the comments because I'm looking for someone to fucking go kick back, fat so you know something. And everyone was like, "This really is great." And I'm like, oh my god, this is it's not it's it's embarrassing is what the fuck it is. She's walking around her fucking backyard like she fucking won the title. It's so fucking embarrassing. I gotta send it to you. It's fucking unbelievable. I'm almost <laughs> optimistic with and her name's not even Eva Marino. It's Evolution. Like that's the other thing. You think they're it. gonna like, make that though? I can't imagine that. They got they're making it fucking Eva Marie, but I, you know. And I think I think with the fucking Divas, the whole Divas Revolution thing, and if she's going to be Evolution, she could, the, 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 what she has to be, 
as like the fucking anti diva. She has to be where she's doing herself evolution. She has to be like the re- the reversal of it. She has to be like the you know, and then they're pissed they're pissed off at her because she's like doing the old stuff or she wants. I, I don't know. I don't know how far you can go with it, but but knowing how they book, not that far. Now so. I'm gonna I'm gonna send this to you. <laughs> it's just so fucking great. I can't fucking. Here you go. Take a look at that link. I want you to watch it as we watch together. <laughs> yes, this is everything. Slay Queen. <laughs> Have you got it? Yep. What? The, why is this even getting shared? Because <laughs> the girl said something like, "Oh, I filmed this yesterday, and you came back today. How perfect!" Or something. Because she was using her music. I'm like, "Fuck!" <laughs> How embarrassing is it? It's fucking embarrassing. She's obviously filmed that herself. Nobody yeah, would film Yeah, she her. puts the camera on the fucking chair and <laughs> stands there holding Diva's title. Okay. Everybody go to uh, Eve Marie's Twitter and scroll down. You won't be able to fucking miss it. It's a, it's a retweet or she's commenting on a tweet. It's a fucking this is fat Karen. It's so great. <laughs> Someone yeah. has put, is there a way to dislike videos on Twitter? <laughs> I so guarantee upset. you, if you fucking comment there that she's a pig, I, you got to get blocked by Eva Marie. I would think so. So let's put girl, you the heavyweight champ. <laughs> <laughs> See, today I only saw like five comments on it, and they were all great. It was like, oh, this is everything. It really is. So I'm like, oh, God. Fuck. All right. Well, that's the show this week. Um, we've gone over an hour for you even with technical difficulties with this fucking show. Uh, follow all my nonsense. Go to at Lingus Mafia if you want to h- hear me talk about everything that is not fucking wrestling. Um, I can't believe we even have a fucking audience. I can't believe... Well, I guess people like to hear people bitch about stuff, so that's why. Uh, Billy is at SGP Soccer on Twitter. You want to go follow him there. It's so hard for me to say. I don't know why. It, it Those letters fuck me up. Uh... We will be hollering at you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. See you next time.